<laughs> Where's it going to be? When are we going to do this? Uh, I, well, I, I think uh, the question, marching is, uh, is great. I love it. I've been uh, a part of so many marches over the past two years that uh, I can't even recollect them all. Uh, so uh, people are fighting. Uh, I think right now the question for us uh, above marching is how can we organize effective community support for the workers that are in the struggle and in the fight to organize to have a say so. And that's all across the board. So that's not just Volkswagen, uh, that's here with the United Campus Workers. Uh, that's with the recent fast food strikes for McDonald's workers as McDonald's uh, uh, walking away every year with corporate profits of uh, $3.5 billion and yet they're advising their workers on how to pick up food stamps and if they don't if they don't have the money to pay their bills, then all of a sudden uh, they should probably not worry about Christmas presents this year. Um, the question is, what do we do to support? And the answer to that has to come from the workers themselves. It has to come from the communities that we're wanting to work to support. And we need to find ways, and Chattanooga for Workers is created for this purpose, to try to find ways for the community to come out and to lend its voice and lend its support and show that we do care and we are here to support. And if it comes to a strike fund, we are going to support it. If it comes to standing in the streets, we're here to support it. Um, if it comes to getting the word out about workers, uh, about attacks that are happening against them, then we're going to help them spread the message. So. And I think I think what you know, Michael brings up here is so important because. Uh, what the strategy they're trying to do is they're trying to pit the community against the union. As a, you know, if it was up to the union alone, you know, if you didn't have folks going up into your street saying stuff, it's not so easy. And I think what you know, Michael's saying is that in order to counteract that, you got to have folks that are going to get up and say, "Hey, no, 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 no. We are the community. We think this is a good thing. We don't think this is going to hurt Chattanooga. We think it's going to make it better." And that's sort of the pressure that you know folks are feeling every day at the plant. And you know, obviously, I'm sorry. Oh no, good. Uh, I mean, at this point, we've gotten the majority of cars, so it's a simple matter of, you know, if the company says no, they don't want to recognize the majority of cars, then we vote. And you know, I'm not, I'm not sure the exact format of how a vote will go down, but you know, we deal with that. As, as, and if it involves getting out there, then we will. At, at, at the moment, though, it's. A lot of ways, I suppose, what, which is frustrating. What are your neighbors saying to you? I mean, if they're against the union, what are they saying? Why are they against or do well, you, you, or, do, or do you get that? Do you get flat? Well, I, actually, my, my neighbors are pro union. You know, yeah. I live in a pretty uh, working class neighborhood. Okay. And uh, the neighbors that I talk to are, are fine. So, where did that come from? I mean, is that one of those? facts that you hear that are like totally bogus? Like, whose neighbors are complaining and why? No, I mean, I interviewed a couple of workers in an initial story that said that they had gotten pressure about it, and it's in the initial story we published. You know, and, and you know, certainly there's been a lot of discussion, about, you know, the folks I've said about that. Yeah, I'm just curious, what they have against it? If I could, I'd like to address the question, when do we march? If you'll think back a few years, the guys in Brown went out on strike. They didn't go out on strike, or the company wasn't changing a whole lot of conditions, but they were gonna get rid of a lot more full-time employees. And the reason for it was that they needed to make more money. But their profit the year before had been over a billion dollars. Of course, that was before corporate profits all seem to be over a billion dollars. But the only thing that helped them succeed was that they had a consistent message and every time Big Brown came back, they always went back to, you're trying to do away with full-time jobs to increase profits for a company 
that had profits over a billion dollars last year. They had public support. And until you get complete public support, you have to be wary. You don't have to be scared, but you have to work like you are. It's kind of like running an election. The only way to win is to run like you're behind. And anytime you're dealing, I can't imagine what you guys are dealing with in the plant. I, I really can't, and I won't even say that I can't. But it has to be so frustrating for it to continue on. But you have to recognize as well, that's part of the game. That's just part of the game. It's kind of like the conditioning that so many people in the workforce get every day. We're conditioned on our way to work based on what we listen to on the radio. Think about what people are listening to on the radio. Think about drive time. Who owns drive time and what runs on the way to work and on the way home? Every day. People are conditioned to believe things that, you know, if they really thought about it, probably are not in their best interest. So what I'm saying is keep the faith. Keep drawing brothers and sisters together. Talk to people in the community. Continue to, to strengthen the movement. Hopefully there won't come a time when we have to march. Hopefully there'll come a time when we get to march. There's a big difference.